Welcome to you all. Let me do a very rapid introduction. We've got the names up here. Gela Gelad, you are the design lead at Alan MacArthur Foundation, looking at what circular economy means for the food, uh, further food system. Uh, Sandrine Samna, Chief Sustainable Officer at uh, Mo Tennessee. Mo Tennessee is the wine and spirits division of uh, LVMH Group and you launched a Living Soils, Living Together sustainability program in 2020. And Adrienne de Mallory, welcome, co-founder at Genesis. Genesis is the world's first soil health rating agency. You've created the first common language for all stakeholders worldwide. Right, let's dive straight into this subject with our three special guests here. Sondheim, I'm going to come to you first. I just mentioned the Living Soils, Living Together program that was created back in 2020. Can you tell us a little bit more about what this is and why it was created? Yeah, hello, hello everyone. Uh, you know, as a, as a global leader in luxury wine and spirits, with many iconic maisons, we have a great responsibility towards the planet and towards the people. Very important. This is the reason why we have uh, this program, Living Soil, Living Together. And uh, this program is to structure our initiative uh, and to set our ambition. Within this program, we have four pillars. The first one is about soils, how to regenerate soils. The second one is to mitigating the climate impact all along the value chain. The third one is engaging society as a whole. And last but not least, the last one is about empowering our people. And as you mentioned, the first one is really how to regenerate soils. Okay, and how has your program since 2020 uh, changed how Moet Hennessy is, is working internally? Very important, you know, in, in terms of uh, soils regeneration to raising awareness about this subject and very important to act. So we have been working on it, you know, for a for, for very, 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 very long time. And uh, it's important to work internally and to work with the entire industry, so, you know, because it is only the collective work uh, we will succeed to, to regenerate soils. We have been working uh, on it for a long time because uh, you can't change everything in one minute like that, particularly when you are working on, fi on field. So we have been working on long time and we have first reducing drastically the input in, in our field. And for example, almost 100% uh, of our vineyard have banned herbicide. And uh, we are testing now, right now, all over the world, you know, regenerative practices. So maybe just uh, in few words, concretely, what does it mean? Uh, we, we want to, for example, implement cover cropping everywhere. It's very important not to have uh, soils naked. So we uh, implement cover cropping everywhere. We try as well agroforestry, meaning we planted some edges and some trees in our vineyard, for example, at NC, with Rina, with Mouet and Chandon, we, in the south of France, as well with Galoupé. And we, uh, we want as well, you know, to, to be sure uh, nature will come back in our vineyard. So uh, we tested as well some initiatives with bees, with birds, with eco-grazing. So it's very important, you know, to, to test and to implement a lot of different initiatives everywhere. Fantastic. So those are some of the initiatives that internally at Moet Tennessee you've been doing. And, and you're a grand maison that's been around for, for centuries, if, decades if not centuries. Um, but I know that you're working with younger organizations, external organizations on this as well. And this is potentially a, an opportunity to, for you to, uh, Adrien, to tell us about Genesis. Yes, thank you. Yes, we are working with, uh, with Moet NC and particularly with uh, NC. We are measuring the soil health in vineyards. So, um, as you know, the soil health is a foundation for regenerative agriculture. So, it's really important to focus on that. But if you want to know the status of the soil, you need real measure, so that's what we do. We do real measure, real soil sample inside the field, and we measure inside the field many indicators to give um, a large di diagnosis of the soil. So we measure with DNA, we measure carbon, we measure pollutants, we measure many indicators, and we try to give a diagnosis of this soil health and how this soil can contribute to many environmental services, because Maybe you know, but 
in the soil, you can measure your contribution to climate, you can measure your contribution to water, uh, to wet, uh, water storage, you can measure your contribution to biodiversity too. So we provide to our clients, like you, <laughs> we provide the most reliable, accurate data uh, about soil health. Fantastic. And Gail, I'm going to come to you now because the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, many people know it and it's best known for its work with and focus on plastics and circular economy. So can you explain for us, please, what is the link between circular economy and regenerative agriculture? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a lot bigger than we intuitively think. I mean, first, um, Philip mentioned the impact of the agricultural system. If you take the food system as a whole, uh, it's a third of greenhouse gas emission. So it's, it has a huge potential, a huge impact on our planet and a huge potential positive impact. So when considering our mission to accelerate the transition to circular economy, we couldn't just go without looking at the food system. So we've been exploring for two, three years now, what would a circular economy for food mean? That's the first point. And then the second, um, since the beginning of circular economy, regeneration is has been at the core and it's been quite a little bit forgotten sometimes, but if you think about what the three principles of a circular economy are, it's you eliminate what you don't need, what you do need you circulate for as long as possible, and then you regenerate nature. And it's true we haven't focused on it as much as the other ones, so since a couple of years we've been really focusing on this, on food, on fashion, uh, the fashion system has a big influence on agricultural land, and now we're looking at the built environment. So, you know, can a building provide an ecosystem service like a farm does? You know, can it clean the air, provide habitat for biodiversity? So, I think as a society, we need to go beyond trying to do a bit less bad. We really need to aim for regeneration, better soil health, better water, better air quality. And I think circular economy is a great way to get us there. Not the only way, but I think it's a pretty solid, solid solution. Mm -hmm. Sandrine gave us some quite concrete examples of what they're doing uh, and work with the soils and how it's changed uh, Moa, Tennessee. Can you give us some examples uh, of how the work that you're doing is influencing and supporting the regenerative agriculture and, and especially the practices within the food industry? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so a lot of the focus, and rightly so, is uh, often on farmers and what they can do. The problem is, although they, although they are one of the key pieces of the system, they're some of the ones with the least influence. So what we've looked at is, what is the role of FMCGs and retailers, so the food brands and the retailers, to scale that regenerative agriculture? And the, the, um, the conclusion is, it's a key role. It's huge, for two big reasons. The first one is, uh, their demand power. So we've calculated that the top 10 FMCGs and retailers have an influence on 40% of agricultural land in Europe. It's, it's enormous. And, and then on top of that, they design what we eat and what we drink. Uh, you know, they make a series, the, the product development teams make a series of decisions that define the look of the product, the taste of the product, but also its environmental impact it's going to define whether it will reduce biodiversity or increase biodiversity, whether it will um, deplenish the soil or replenish the soil. And I think sometimes these teams don't realize how much power they can have to, to move the system in the right direction. So in essence, uh, FMCGs and retailers can signal the demand for better practices for different, more diverse ingredients. They have the demand power because of these, these, these um, two reasons. And What's happening today is one of the most incredible stats is 60% of what we eat comes from only four crops. It's rice, potato, corn, and wheat. And what that signals to farmers is, well, plant those four crops. And that, makes, that means big monoculture, big fields of monoculture all across our uh, countryside. And if we want to reach Philip's vision, we need to do things very differently. They, they, they start to, they need to rethink how they design their product and there's a big mindset shift that needs to happen. So instead of bending nature to produce food, which is what we're doing today, we're saying, I want wheat in that biscuit, I'm gonna go and grow some wheat. Instead of doing that, we need to design food for nature to thrive. We need to start with the needs of nature. What does nature need in this ecosystem? And then design the products accordingly. 
Um, a really good example is uh, this company called Hot Medad. It's an English company. They're amazing. They have a flower that they call the meadow flower. It's made of all the pulses and grains and seeds that grow in a typical British meadow. So they look at what grows, what is good for the soil, they make a product out of it. That's, ex that's the mindset shift that we want to see, and that's the responsibility of FMCGs and retailers. And that's what a circular economy for the food system means. Okay. I, w I want to bring us to the subject that whether we're in the industry or consumers, uh, touches all of us, and that is the various labels and certificates and badges that we see on our, on our food. Um, as consumers, sometimes it can feel a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot out there, and I know that for the industry also. But um, Genesis, you're doing something a little bit different. You've got a slightly different approach yes. to the certificates. Can you tell we us about that? We, we are not a label. We are an MRV tool. So we are here to measure, verify, measure, <laughs> report and verify what is uh, the, the soil health, how is the soil health. Uh, it's really different. I think there's many labels. Uh, it's difficult for, for the consumer to know what he has to choose between all these labels. Uh, we are not here to, to give something to the consumer at this time. We just need to know, to, to, we, we just want to provide the best information. So we measure, we verify, we give a rating because you can be at, uh, I don't know, you can, you can improve your impact over time. So we are not focused on declarative information. We are just measuring inside the field. Okay, and, and I think it's very, very important to measure. You know, we always improve what we measure, and uh, to have the soil as measurement, yeah. it's it's key. Yeah, it's it's um, we need to be focused on the outcomes. I and think. I, I think it's having the measurements, but also then being able to communicate those through, whether we're using badges and certificates to be able to help under people understand, or even other parts of the, the food industry, the, I mean, the hotels and restaurants. And yeah, true. You know, certificates is like the credibility of the, of the different practices. So, for, for example, the organic certification, the organic label, is quite well known for everybody, and we are very happy that we just obtained the, this organic certification for Chateau Galoupé in the south of, uh, of France. Another label, which has mean it's very, very interesting, it's the ROC, Regenerative Organic Certification, because you have to be organic and you have to uh, be sure to have regenerative practices and to be sure you have the uh, good social aspect for workers. You know, this is, this is the ROC certification. And we just obtained in Argentina uh, last week as well. As, uh, and I think it's our role to explain this certification for sure for our clients and for the, the chef, gastronomy, restaurant, hotel, and, and, and so on. The industry as a whole, definitely. Um, Gail, what about when we get to the supermarkets? I mean, I, I know that you have sort of you have some thoughts about as consumers how we use these labels and and that. I mean, if I'm honest, I've been working in this topic for a long time. I st I'm confused. I'm still confused. So I, how can we expect, you know? Uh, consumers that don't know anything about it to, uh, to know. So they're really important. And it's important that we, we get better labels, that we get the right labels. But I think one of the things that at the Ellen MacArthur, we really believe in this theory of change that, you know, ideally we would be in a world where there will be no bad choices for consumers. If you wouldn't need any label because everything would be good. And so what, we, what we're trying to do is work with the system, work with the, the actors and the businesses and change how businesses work so that everything that comes out of these businesses, everything that's on the shelves is good and you don't need any label. Okay. I want to come to a question now that's very important and, and, to, and to really pull out from each of you your thoughts on what are the greatest mindset changes we need. We talked about some of the actions, the, the true work that you're doing, certificates and labels, but what are the greatest mindset changes that are still needed in order to support agricultural regeneration and, uh, and climate health? Sandrine, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think it's very important, uh, you know, to change the mindset and uh, it's very important, you know, to gather everybody to have the same, uh, same ma mindset. I totally agree. This is the reason why uh, we, we created the World Living Souls Forum last year. So it's a forum dedicated on soils regeneration and different practices. And the aim of this forum is really to share the best of uh, the, the, the state of know-how, you know, best uh, share the best practices 
to be sure to scale them, of course, and really important to invite, of course, NGO, institution, experts, scientists, young people, and of course, companies, uh, food and beverage companies, and particularly in, in our case, it was very important to invite our competitors to, to work together on this subject. It's only a collective work. Uh, to allow us to, to, to go further and to go faster. Definitely, this is not something where competition is going to help us, it's collaboration that is going to no, make us progress. And to add something, we need more knowledge about soil, about regenerative agriculture. We need uh, some really factual information about that. Okay, so we've got uh, knowledge, collaboration, and Gail, mindset yeah. change. Yeah, no, I mean, I absolutely agree with what, what you said. Um, I think, well, there's the one I already said, instead of bending nature to produce food, Food can be designed for nature to thrive. That's the one thing I want you to remember from this. Um, I think another one is that we need to stop blaming the farmer. We need to change the relationship we have with farmers, well, FMCGs and retailers. Uh, instead of having short contract terms on one ingredient, maybe we can have longer contract terms. Maybe we can come together in collaboration with competitors to say, well, we're going to collectively buy all the ingredients that come out of your farm because out of a regenerative farm is going to come a lot more ingredients than out of a conventional farm. So you need this collective. And another one that I've seen a lot, so we've been working with many companies, and one of the big and beautiful challenge and mindset shift is around diversity. So we're going to go from a system that is very homogenous, where it's about one type of crop. If, you, if it's one variety of wheat, if you put another variety, this, the, the machine uh, stops. So we're going to need to go from that to many, many hundreds of thousands of different crops. Uh, and that will require such a different um, mindset. And in the whole, you know, I really believe that diversity is the answer to most of our problems. So there's not going to be one solution. There are going to be many solutions. And what that means for this food system is instead of having one silos, you're going to have several silos. So the supply chain will need to adapt to this complexity that comes with diversity and the beauty of diversity. I think that's one thing that we're hearing on stage here, be it from Philippe or our, our guests here. It's actually about uh, an, a total look at the food chain from the soil, from the climate, from everything our soils are doing for us, all the way through to our supermarkets and our, and our plates. Actually, I just want to mention, Adrien and I were talking earlier about um, all the things that soil can do for us that we don't actually think about. And I was, I was talking about a book called The Ministry for the Future by Kim Stanley Robinson, which is sci-fi. Some of you may have read this science fiction. And when I heard about Genesis, I was like, oh, wow, this is sci-fi coming to life. This is real life. Um, so I'm really happy and pleased to see that. I want to talk about a, a few other things that are going on uh, around the world that are going to be helping us and really continuing all the amazing work that you're doing. Now, uh, Gail, I know that you were on a Eurostar late last night, and Philippe, was, uh, who was just with us, is on a Eurostar early this morning because you both came from the big food redesign event in London. Right. Yes, absolutely. I've read the Ministry for the Future. Amazing. Um, yeah. So we just launched a big innovation challenge. So if an, a, anyone in this room is from is in the business of making food products, uh, I invite you to participate. No, oh, back. I invite you to participate to our big food redesign challenge. So it's going to be a learning journey. It's going to be an innovation challenge to create food products that regenerate nature. Um, you know, it could look like a, a box of cereals where you have wheat and peas that have been grown together, intercropped in the field. It could look like a, a line of cheeses uh, that were grown in a, produced in a silver pasture, so where you have cows and uh, trees uh, symbiotically living together. And you can imagine a walnut milk roquefort and a dairy comté. Uh, <laughs> that are made from the same farm. And we've calculated, actually, if that existed, the farm would lower its greenhouse gas emission by 95%. So we want to see products like these on the shelves in the supermarkets. Um, there's so many possibilities to create amazing products. Um, so whether you're a big established brand or you're a small creative innovator, we really want you to come and join us so that we can prove to the world that it is possible to create a food system that is regenerative by design, that we can feed the world with really beautiful, healthy food that is providing farmer decent living wage. 
And Gail, but where can people find out information about this uh, innovation challenge? They can find on our website. On your website? Yeah, bigfoodredesign.org. Excellent. Thank you. So go and check that out. And Sandrina, you've got something going on as well. But yes, I think uh, to, 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 to come back uh, on what Guy said, I think it's very, very important to create community, you know, collaboration and community. So let's create the regenerative community. And uh, um, we really want, you know, to, to continue our World Living Souls Forum. Of course, you will be uh, a part of it next, uh, next year, and you were already here. So for next year, the World Living Souls Forum, we want to create in partnership with Change Now. So uh, we, we are here today, Muet uh, Energy uh, with Change Now, and next year, Change Now will be with us uh, for our World, World Living Souls Forum, for the regenerative community. Fantastic. When is your, when is your forum next year <laughs> with Change Now? We will see. Maybe You'll see. Before, before summer or after summer. It okay, so this is summer. breaking news that we have from the stage here. Wonderful. I want to thank all three of you. I want to thank Sandrine, Gail, and Adrienne for helping us under understand the role thank you. Thank you. that food industry plays in regenerative agriculture. It's been a pleasure having you here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandrine. Thank you, Gail.